Hi, this is Ben with the USBGF. I'm here today to give a brief intro on recording and streaming. Uh, you know, we've been doing a lot of recording and streaming. Actually, here in Novi, we have 10 setups between Dimitri and I. But uh, it's not as easy as it may look. Um, but it's also not too difficult. So we're going to go through a brief intro. Uh, there's going to be a guide published soon that will give a little bit more detail and uh, help you walk you through uh, some of these things that I'm going to gloss over. So to start, uh, you know, we've got a basic equipment list that you're going to need to have. And that starts with a computer. The computer should be, a, well, for the purposes of this guide, the computer should be a Windows computer. Um, Windows 7, 8, 10. I'm sure there's a way to get this to work on a Mac. I have no idea what it is. Uh, and then the computer should be your average computer, four gigabytes of RAM, you know, at least um, one gigahertz processing power. If you can run Windows, you should be able to do everything that uh, I do with streaming and recording. The next thing you need is a camera. I recommend the Logitech uh, 920 or 930. Uh, the reason I recommend this camera, um, it, one, it has the best ratings for quality, but two, it has an internal uh, you know, program, I'll just call it, that helps transfer the data between the camera and the computer so that your computer graphics card doesn't have to do quite so much work. Uh, it allows you to have an average computer because you have a better camera. So the stand that I use, is, I have two different types of stands that I use. I have one that I use when I'm traveling, when I'm flying, and I have one that I use when I can drive. Uh, the reason that I use a different one is because there's a higher quality stand. It gives you a better, just more control, and that's this one here. This is a floor stand. Uh, it's actually, uh, what it is, um, a microphone stand, you know, for like a band. Uh, so it's an onstage boom mic stand. And you can set this up, just turning all these little knobs here, to sit on the floor and reach out over the table so that you can mount your camera on the end over the board. The one drawback that I always have with this stand is that people will watch the match. You know, you'll have featured matches streaming. And people will kick the bottom of the stand. In order to prevent that from being too much of an issue, we tape down the bottoms now. So there's the, you know, the tripod at the bottom, and we just put tape to the floor on all three feet in order to help improve that. Um, the thing that you would use when you're traveling, uh, and there's a couple different options, but this one's my favorite, are these gooseneck, um, I guess they're still mic stands, but it's an onstage gooseneck, and you'll find it from there. But they screw together. Um, I use two 19-inch, uh, I don't know, poles, we'll call it. And then I mount them to the table with this table clamp or table mount. And all this stuff can be found on Amazon. Um, watch for the guide. I'll have links directly to all the, the items. So you mount this to the table. And then you lean this over to record the match. The thing about this that uh, isn't ideal is that they don't, they barely support the weight. So once you put this together, if you try to mount the camera at something like this angle, it's just going to fall over onto the board. And nobody, nobody likes a you know, droopy camera stand. So after that, the last thing you need is a clamp or a clip, mic clip. I like to use this universal one because if you get a different camera, uh, you can put it however you want. You don't have to monkey with any kind of screw, um, you know, this has a mount, but you don't have to do any of that. You just clip it in and you move it all around and you get some flexibility here, you get some flexibility here, and you can get a good picture. And uh, the last thing you need are the right cables. Really, you should be okay with power cables and a USB cable. Uh, you may not need the USB cable, but it just gives you more flexibility. You can put the camera further away from the computer. You want to make sure you get USB 3.0. Uh, you know, compatible cables, even though the cameras I think are still 2.0, the 3.0 cables let you uh, put your computer further away. You know, you could put a couple of these together, whereas the 2.0 cables have some kind of limit um, on distance. I don't, I don't really know what that is, uh, but it's just worth getting the 3.0 cables, and they're really cheap. So some of the other considerations that you need to think about are the internet. You need to have at least a two megabyte uh, upload speed on your internet. You can test this by going to speedtest.org, I think it is. Uh, it needs to be consistent. I mean, that's the biggest part. It, a lot of hotels' internet will go up and down, up and down. They've got a lot of users on their, uh, you know, on their system, 
but if you can't get a nice consistent, you know, around two megabytes, it really can be probably even as low as one, as long as it's consistent, then you're not gonna get a good stream. Uh, the other thing is power. You need to actually have plugs close to where you wanna stream. Uh, some hotels I know do not have a lot of plugs, and so you may end up having to run a power cable across the room. Tape. Most hotels are not gonna let you run cables without taping them down. You can hope that they have good tape, but they don't always. So I would recommend buying gaff tape. It's kind of expensive. It's called gaffer's tape. It's $20 for a roll like this, but it won't leave your cables really sticky and gross. Uh, and you'll always have it with you. Uh, you know, it's easy to travel with. You can tape down your, your cables and not hurt anybody by having them trip. Name tags. This is one that's missed a lot. Um, there's three options here. One is that there is software that I'm gonna show you that allows you to put the names in the picture. Uh, I like this option, especially because you can, you can change it quickly, you don't waste paper or anything, uh, and when you play the video back, you've got the names right in the first frame. But another great option is to have little dry erase boards. If you can go to Kinko's or FedEx or Office Max, whichever, they will usually laminate a little piece of paper for you, and then you just get a dry erase marker, you write the names, and they're easy to erase, easy to replace. The last option uh, is you can print uh, name tags, just a list of players, or you can just write them with a thick black marker. Uh, you don't want to use a pen that'll wash out. You won't see the name on the video. And then time. So this is just another consideration that it's taken years for me to get comfortable playing and streaming and recording the same tournament. You're going to get interrupted a lot. Okay, so players are going to are going to stop you in the middle of your match. They're they're going to you're going to be right in the middle of a hard decision, and they're going to say, "Oh Ben, we're done." Right? That just comes with the territory. So if you're not okay with that, don't do it. <laughs> Trust me, I, I've had plenty of tournaments where I wasn't ready for that. I didn't get what it took yet. And it, it's really frustrating. It's not worth it. It is worth it, however, if, if you dedicate somebody to it or if you just realize that's what it's, it's going to be. And I've gotten used to it now, so it's fine. It just took a little while, right? It took a year or two. So last thing I want to talk to is all software. And so here we're going to go to the presentation and show you some of the software I use in the websites we use. The first thing I'll show you is my favorite program to stream and record with, ManyCam. The one downside of ManyCam is that it's not free. Um, it's very user friendly, it's got a lot of functionality that I enjoy, but it's not free. I think it's about 40 bucks or 50 bucks a license. So here, here is ManyCam. This is the studio version, so I have a few more options. Uh, than the basic version, the, the free version. And you get 12 video feeds, which you can add any cameras that you have on your computer. And down here, you get to pick your resolution. You get to pick your audio input. And this is where you can do the text. So I'll focus on these three features. The text is pretty easy. You enable text and you type it in here and it shows up at the bottom of your image. You can change the color and the, um, the background. The image is also fairly straightforward. It's just based on the image that you have selected here. To select a new image, you right click and when you have multiple cameras, you'll, you'll select cameras and then pick the camera that you want to use. And then audio, you click on this tab and you add a microphone and you, again, you add the camera that you're using. Once you have these set, so I'm going to go ahead and set the uh, internal microphone and the internal webcam, so you see my face here. And then I'll set the text. Uh, so we'll say Ben versus, uh, I don't know, Phil. So then what I'm going to do, once I uh, have my name in, once I have the audio and the video, I just hit record. And now I'm recording the video file. It's just going to name it a uh, video one, video two. So you will have to go back and rename it. But you've always got your recording. I'm going to go ahead and put a blank image up here. OK. So now. Uh, there are some more features in ManyCam, you know, th interesting things to play with, things like being able to play a, a pre-recorded video. I'm not going to go into those here. Um, I will talk more about those in the future. Instead, I'm going to go ahead and go to Ustream and show you how to convert this 
uh, many cam feed into an actual stream. Okay, so this is the home page of Ustream. Now, uh, I would recommend creating an account for each, for your tournament or for your personal use. I know there is a USBGF account if your streaming is associated with the USBGF. So I'm going to log in, and I just log in through Facebook here, and uh, I'm going to go to my Michigan channel. So go live. Uh, I do not recommend pro broadcasting. It's just too expensive. Not enough value there. No value back, Ammon. And on this stream, it's going to select a webcam. Now, it automatically selected my ManyCam virtual webcam. So one of the things that ManyCam does is it creates a virtual webcam. It, it basically tricks your computer into thinking that it's, it itself is a webcam. And so what you can do is you can put multiple, comp multiple or, uh, camera feeds into this program and it outputs whatever you put here on the image. So I have ManyCam and I have uh, the audio. I'm going to go ahead and pick ManyCam as well. And then I click Start Broadcasting. It's really that simple. Uh, I don't need to record it here, although I can. Uh, this would record it on Ustream. Instead, what I do is I take the video file that I'm recording on ManyCam and I upload it to YouTube. Uh, Ustream isn't really a great hosting site for videos either. YouTube is, is much better. It's that simple. I mean, that's how you stream. Uh, video, video audio added to ManyCam, go to Ustream, click Broadcast. I know something else I wanted to talk about. Another software that you need to have installed in order to use these Logitech 920 cameras is the driver itself. Now Logitech um, has the software online available for free and once you install it, it's going to install both a quick capture program as well as the driver that will run the camera itself. Uh, so I will show you what that software looks like. So here is the main page of that software. Um, you can use Logitech to record if you just click Quick Capture. But usually what I use it for is a webcam controller. And it automatically launches this controller. And uh, it's how you control the zoom and the white balance and the sound balance for the camera. So we get it loaded here. So here, if I click webcam options, uh, I can have it follow my face, which is an interesting feature where it will try to zoom in to wherever my face is. Uh, it, it'll automatically balance the sound and balance the light. Uh, and it'll also automatically focus. So some of these things you may want to turn on or off. It, it just comes with experience and with the surroundings. If you have a white tablecloth, sometimes the white balance becomes a problem. Uh, if your players are putting their hands high on the board a lot, it also can become a problem. The camera will refocus onto their hand and then refocus onto the board. So just try it out. You know, do some testing. I, I actually have set this up in my house a couple of times just to record matches and, uh, or games that I'm playing with my family and just see what works, what doesn't. I don't generally change anything. Uh, you know, as a default, I would just leave these three checked and let the camera do its own thing. Now, if I open ManyCam, I will show you that it will actually tell you that ManyCam is what is using that camera. So the nice thing about these uh, 920s is that you can actually have more than one plugged in at once. I would recommend if you're new to recording, new to broadcasting, that you just do one feed. Um, well, one feed per computer. You can run two on one computer, but you have to use two different programs uh, if you're using ManyCam, and there's some technical issues that will come up. You know, your, your computer will not, it just doesn't like having two of the same cameras, but it works. Uh, it just takes fighting with it a little bit. 
Uh, I will be putting more in the written guide. I will help you understand what other software is out there to record, to broadcast. Uh, I will put you know, some, some quick tips on the, uh, you know, using multiple cameras. But overall, this should be what you need to get started. You should be able to get one stream going. Uh, again, I, I guess what I'll do is um, go through the names of everything one last time, and maybe, maybe it'll help uh, make sure you can find it all until the guide comes out. So this is a Logitech uh, 920 on stage universal mic clip, gaff or gaffer's tape, USB GF 3.0 cable, this is 15 feet, universal, uh, or I'm sorry, my, uh, I think it's an onstage table clamp. Uh, you'll find all of these onstage things together usually on Amazon. Onstage gooseneck, and onstage boom mic stand. And that should be everything you need. So thanks for watching, and uh, I hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions, you can always email me. Um, I prefer benjamin.a.friesen, F-R-I-E-S-E-N, at gmail.com. Uh, I watch my email all the time, so I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks.